G'day sports fans, it's Fanny100 here, and welcome back to the Casual Review Show. This is the type of video I used to make back years ago when I started uploading daily. It's basically my way of giving you a general preview of a game, like a review would, uh, but we don't go super in-depth, we, we don't score it out of 10 or anything like that, we just go through the small stuff, tell you whether I think you should give it a go or not, and that's it basically. Games are subjective, so it's just like to casually tell you about stuff I'd recommend. Today, as you can see, we are looking at Maneater. My fiancé suggested I bring back this show and talk about this game, and as we both have a love for sharks, and I've played this game quite a lot in the past, and recently as well, actually. I've been playing it quite a bit in my downtime. So Maneater is what you might call a shark RPG. It gives you control of a bull shark, and you do the standard stuff, gain XP by eating sea life, leveling up, gaining skills, and eventually she gains access to evolutions. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue right here, and uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. This, this game is really fun. It's really cool. It's yeah, it's all it's like a huge RPG system, um, just role playing a shark, but not just. Tan Tordu was built just in time for the slow decline of golf as a popular sport. Now that's good old Chris Parnell. I'll talk about him a bit later. But this is our shark that we have here. Now what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to unequip all this stuff. So that you can see what the shark looks like, like normally once you've leveled her up. And uh, I'll go in more depth about what I mean shortly. We're just going to unequip everything. We'll keep that stuff on because it's just your organs. Um, so this is the base look without any body parts or anything on her. We'll swim out. Um, we'll leave our little grotto here, which is like your safe area. You can save the game here and you're safe from any predators, enemies. We're currently at like a golf course area, so the water's kind of shallow. <coughs> so... Get to control this bull shark, and you do the standard stuff, and you get XP and all that sort of thing, like I was saying before. So, as you level up, you gain you gain access to your evolutions. So, like, you can equip stuff to your jaw, your head, your body, your fins, and your tail. Um, so they can include powers, so you can do things like poison your enemies, um, like with the, I think it was with the shadow stuff. So with the shadow stuff, you could poison enemies and stuff, um, or you can also shock them with, like, the bioelectric teeth that do shock damage and that sort of thing. Um, so basically, yeah, you're not playing a regular shark. She's pretty special. <laughs> she's, uh, uh, she becomes pretty crazy looking towards the end of the game. So the story of this game, it doesn't get super deep or complicated or anything like that. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't really hint at the evolution of the shark and how crazy she gets or anything like that. Um, but if anything is hinted at, it's pretty much the, uh, the radiation in the water is blamed. Excuse me while I kill this mako shark that decided to pick a fight with me. Water is a frothing mix of blood and dirt. Now, what was I saying? So, <laughs> the game, like, kind of begins with you actually playing as the mother to a shark, and after learning the controls, you get captured by this guy named Scaly Pete. Uh, he's a fisherman whose dad got killed by a shark years ago, and he's been looking for the shark that did it. At first, he thinks it's you, discovers you have a pup, he cuts it out of you, um, the pup bites his hands off, the pup escapes, and then you begin your journey as the baby shark, actually, and you start growing, leveling up, seeking revenge for the death of your mum, taking on other famous hunters and stuff, which I'll show you in the menu here. Um, this is your infamy, so these are all the famous hunters that you fight as you gain uh, reputation, basically, by attacking humans and completing objectives, and that kind of thing. So, uh, once you've built up enough reputation, you could fight Pete again. I still haven't fought the last dude yet, uh, which is infamy rank 10. Um, but the enemy, the humans do get tougher and everything, and they use a lot of different weapons and boats to try and take you down. Um, but as you defeat some of these people, some of them will drop some of the rewards. They will actually drop some of the parts, like the the you know tail parts and that kind of thing. Some of them from objectives in, on the map, uh, which you see here. Uh, where's the map here? So these are all the objectives with ticks of things I've done. So some of the objectives award you body parts and stuff, and some of them uh, just give you. Uh, XP and materials, which you can see on the top right hand of the corner of the screen. That is all the materials that you can get in this game. Um, so as you like equip all these different body parts, they give you bonuses if you complete a set. So if you wear the shadow set, for example, um, it'll give you a big uh, bonus by wearing them all, which might be like you know bonus, bonus poison damage or bonus base bit movement speed, all that kind of basic kind of stuff. Um, so your playstyle can really alter depending on what you're using, because if you go like full electricity build, then you get certain bonuses and you can stun wildlife and stuff as you attack it. Um, if you go like uh, with the, the shadow thing, you can poison people uh, and also slow them, that kind of thing as well. So there's a lot, 
there's a lot to do once you start upgrading parts for your shark and customizing it you can go really crazy so i mostly use um if i try to remember i mostly use i think so i use the shadow teeth so i don't i don't use the perfect you got to go into the grotto to do that my bad um so we'll uh dismiss that we'll go back to the grotto um which is where is where you can equip and upgrade all your stuff so we'll take a little bull shark back down the here provides a brief respite from the sturm und drang of the gulf. so now we'll go so what i usually do at the moment, as I've been doing shadow teeth, so I haven't been doing a complete perk build because I haven't got all the parts. Like I haven't got all the shadow stuff, so I've been upgrading uh, a lot. Of, so I've got the shadow fins upgraded. On the body, we're using the electric body, and the tail we're using the electric tail. So currently, I'm using the electric tail, the electric body, the shadow fins, the electric head, and the shadow teeth. Um, so I haven't fully upgraded this yet. So as you go, um, by eating different wildlife and stuff, you gain one of the top four resources. Um, which in order, I'm pretty sure, was, uh, I'm actually forgetting. I know the, the green one's protein, minerals the blue one, radiation is the, uh, the last one. I forget what the first one is called. But each of those, you need to use those to slowly upgrade these. So they start at tier 1, and then as you upgrade them, they'll go all the way up to tier 5, which is their max. And it increases, basically, the stat bonuses and stuff they do. So if it starts off saying... That it gives you like you know plus five percent lunge speed. Then eventually it might be like you know plus twenty or something as you slowly upgrade it. It might go up by increments each time. And then you can also equip different organs. So you have like a sonar and uh, increase the amount of like protein you get out of eating enemies. Um, you can also increase your max health that sort of thing. Uh, as you lose health when you kill and eat things, you actually gain health back. So that's how you refill your health basically is by eating stuff, which makes sense. So you can also go up and above the water. You can also like jump out and stuff. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of crazy things you can do. Um, so like, despite this game being made by a small studio, uh, it's very pretty for how it looks. Uh, to give you a better idea, we will try and fast travel to a different grotto. So we will fast travel to the grotto out here at Sapphire Bay, which is out in the ocean. I'm going to give you a real idea of this, because you get a decent sense of scale with this game. In the game. 70s, abandoned bales of marijuana frequently appeared along Port Clovis's shoreline. These were colorfully referred to by locals as Square Grouper. Sometimes I hate this grotto because I have trouble seeing the, the way out. It's really frustrating. Oh, there it is. Now watch this. As we come out of here, now we're out in the ocean. The sense of scale you get from this is crazy. So there's a lot of wildlife around here, but uh, like I said, like you get you get like this uh, real ocean effect. Like it's all this fog and things will just appear and reappear out of the fog, like in the real ocean. Honestly, it's quite impressive. This game kind of blows you away when you first see it. Um, there's a bucket load of different wildlife. You got like you know turtles, and sea and seals, different species of small fish, like this king mackerel over here. And uh, that sort of thing. And barracudas, mako sharks, hammerheads, great whites, and even orcas, actually. Which are really tough, though. Um, they're, very, they're very strong. They do a lot of damage to you, and you've got to run away. Speaking of which, combat. Now, combat for this game is pretty interesting. You could, you could bite on enemies. Um, you could bite them and grab them and carry them around. So, like, you can approach something, lunge at it. If it's small, you'll just instantly eat it. If it's like a turtle... This is a turtle here. You can like grab it, carry it around. You can also tail whip things with a button press as well. And the music changes when something's aggressive. So certain things like barracudas and that will attack you. Then you've got to fight them. Um, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. You can also like do dodges and stuff as well. So you can dodge up and down, like dodge attacks. Be really Your maneuverability can be pretty depth once you get used to it. And also when you grab things, you can swing them around and do damage. You can smack them into like the ground or a wall and it'll do damage to them and stun them. Uh, so it's... The only thing that probably I have a bit of a gripe with is the lock-on system. So when you come across something you want to fight or attack, you can press a button and you can lock on to it. And that way you will, like, it'll stay While in uh, your field of view. And Spanish mackerel, the king mackerel doesn't really talk to its family and prefers that you just stop asking questions, okay? <laughs> So, you can lock onto things, but as soon as they, like, leave your field of view, like, if they, like, go around you or over you or something, the lock-on disappears, and you've got to refine them again and lock on. It gets a little frustrating. Oh, it's a swordfish. He'll probably want to fight me. So, you can lock onto the swordfish, but then if I was, if he was to get away from me, um, then, like, I would lose sight of him, and I would have to find him again, 
um, and lock onto them. So the lock on system is a little frustrating because it doesn't just like spin the camera to stay focused on them. So the only gripe I have is I wish they could fix that maybe. Um, so there's a lot of the way the the game progresses is as you reach each new area, you'll be given heaps of different uh, like quests objectives, right? Which could include um, like visiting a certain area, killing so many mackerels, killing parrotfish, you know, killing humans. Uh, finding like license plates and that sort of thing in the water and they all give you like you know materials XP that sort of thing so you can slowly gain levels and use the materials to upgrade all your body parts and make your shark hugely tough and it'll increase all your ratings on the left there, on the right there so as you when you start you're a pup and then when you get to like level 10 or something I think or maybe about, about 10 or something like, you turn into a teen from teen you go to adult and then you go from adult you go to elder and then you get to Mega, which is what we're at. We're at the level cap of 30 as a Mega. There is DLC coming for the game, which raises the level cap, but I doubt you can get any bigger than a Mega Shark. <laughs> the wildlife, like, sadly, doesn't, like, interact with each other. Like, as you watch everything swimming around, nothing, like, gets into fights or eats each other or attacks or anything. The wildlife doesn't interact, but it does respond to you reasonably well. They'll try and run, you know, certain things like sharks and swordfish will attack you on sight because they're aggressive and defensive. Um... The real challenge isn't really until you come across things like alligators, great whites, orcas, because they're pretty tough and they'll hurt, especially if you're underleveled. If you're below the level of a creature, then they will do a lot of damage to you, and uh, you've either got to try and run away, or try and fight if you're lucky. Uh, your movement speed is fast enough that most of the time you can outrun things, which is pretty good. Um, humans aren't very smart, though. If you attack humans, the best they'll do is just try and slow to swim away from you. They're not they're not super smart. Unless they're hunters. They do a lot of damage in their boats with weapons and stuff. So then you've got to like, you know, get to the surface of the water and you're on the surface of the water fighting them. You can jump out, do a crazy stuff, launch yourself in the air. You can also launch yourself onto land if you want. You do have a limited oxygen before you die. But you can launch yourself onto land if you wanted to and attack people that way and be an absolute madness. Um... The real star of this game, though, honestly, is Chris Parnell. So Chris Parnell is the guy they chose to voice act the narrator. So the narrator is a disembodied voice of a guy who hosts a TV reality show. He talks about sharks and hunters and that kind of thing. And he spouts, like, animal facts, world facts, cracks weird and funny jokes as you explore, level up, and interact with the world. It adds a, it adds a level charm to the game. And while it might annoy some people, I, I personally quite enjoy his wild musing as I slaughtered wildlife and became a true monster. <laughs> Like, so overall, like, once you get used to those few little issues, and if you don't mind Chris Pano cracking jokes and facts, which is, I, I quite like it, I'm a shark fan, so like, I, I love hearing some of the stuff he's said, it's actually been quite educational, so I've enjoyed that. Like, overall, Man Eater is quite a unique game in the time it came out, uh, back in May and November last year, 2020, Nintendo Switch Sport coming out back in May 2021. So if you like sharks, or you like RPG style games, and you're looking for something a bit cheesy, a bit mindless, and a bit unique, I recommend this game to 100%. This is a uh, PC version of the game that I'm playing right now. Um, the game is available on all platforms, and there's also an Xbox Game Pass. So if you have a PC or an Xbox, then you can play it on the pass right now. Uh, it's a fun and charming game, because it's just something a bit different, you know? Because <laughs> you just swim around, killing stuff, doing objectives. It's a mouthful of disgusting blubber for its efforts. So I mean, Chris is funny. <laughs> so it's it's cool. It's different, and like the areas are pretty big. Like I haven't even been to every area in the game, but like there's a fair bit to do. Like these are all pretty big areas. It'll take you a couple of minutes to get to the end of each one. And some is like shallow water, some is rivers, you know. And this one's like you're going out into the ocean. You can hear whales in the distance and stuff. There's boats up here. There, there's a lot. There's a, the game's bigger than it looks. And it's semi-open world, I suppose, with the areas just separated like the way they are. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a really, it's a really fun game. And I hope that you might think so as well. So like, that's, that's basically how we structure this review. We talk about the game, we give you an idea what it's like, and basically, I don't score or anything. I'm just saying like, hey, it's fun. I'd recommend it. If you're a shark lover, you love RPGs, or look at something just a bit different, I would 100% recommend it. Being on Game Pass, it's that's basically free if you already have that, so it's not going to hurt you to try it, you know? If you don't like it, you can uninstall it. But I'm hoping that just a little bit of random stuff I've shown in here has uh, given you an idea what to expect and how much to enjoy it, you know? So, uh, if you are new to the channel, I really would appreciate you coming by, watching. Um, I don't do reviews like this very often, but I will try and do more in the future if that's what you guys would like to see. Because uh, I've been I've been I've been enjoying this a lot, and it was about time that I talked about it. Uh, so um, if you enjoy this review, 
please smack that like button. And if you did, you could like share this video as well on your social media platforms that allow videos, such as your Discord, your Twitter, and uh, you know, Facebook as well, would actually be really helpful. Um, so I'd, I really would appreciate that. If you're new to this channel, subscribe. You know, it's, it's free, and uh, I'd really would appreciate that. Look forward to more reviews like this in the future. I definitely want to do them. Um, and it would mean a lot to me that you've chosen to watch my content. would really appreciate it. Uh, and if you already are a subscriber, hit that notification bell so you get notified about all my uploads, because there's quite a few. There's double uploads every weekday, playing all kinds of games, competitive games, all that sort of thing. And every now and again, I'll sprinkle in a review if there's a game that I'm really enjoying and I want to talk about like this. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and look forward to more. Let me know if there's more you'd like to see um, on this game or anything else. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments. I'll respond to them. If you have any questions about the game, I will do my best to answer and help you make a decision whether you want to give it a go or not. <laughs> so till the next time, guys, Dodds at Game Over Screen, I am Phantom 100, and I'm signing out for now.